So now in this video we're going to look at a circuit. This is a 555 timer there and I have it wired up basically as a Schmidt trigger comparator. Right now there's equal amount of light for the most part falling on the light dependent resistors and the output is low. To set the output high I'm going to shade the light dependent resistor that goes to the positive supply. There you can see that set the output high. But when the light level got equal again, it didn't go back to low, it stayed high. That's why it's a Schmidt trigger. When they're equal, it stays in the last state you put it into. So we're going to shade the light dependent resistor that goes ground, and it goes back to low again. When it's equal, then it stays in that state that we put it in of low. And so to start off looking at this circuit, we're going to look at how we wire it up powering it. So pin number eight right there goes to the positive supply. I'm using five volts, but it's turned off right now. There you can see pin eight to the positive supply. Pin one uh, goes to ground, or uh, negative supply, zero volts right there. Pin four is the reset pin. It's waiting for a low signal, uh, ground, uh, close to ground. Doesn't have to be exactly ground. But in uh, any case, we want to prevent that. So we're just putting it to the positive five volts right there because it'll pick up stray signals in the air. And the little white jumper, that's uh, three right there. That's just uh, extending pin three to the other board over here. So that's not as cluttered. So now when it comes to the output, when the output is low, we want the blue LED to light up. That's a uh, pretty direct connection to ground when it comes to this integrated circuit. So short lead the cathode, that's the uh, cathode right there, you gotta put it in the right way or it won't light up. We're gonna put to that jumper that uh, goes across to the output right there. Long lead the anode, we're gonna go up one row. We're gonna use a 1000 ohm resistor right there from the resistor to the positive supply. So you can see that current will flow that way when the output is low. We're using a higher value resistor because blue LEDs are pretty bright and it makes a really good uh, connection to ground. Now, we're gonna take the uh, red LED right there. Uh, so long lead, the anode is going to the output and so we're gonna connect it to the same road as the cathode there and then cathode down there is gonna be headed to ground. We have a lower value resistor for a couple of reasons. Uh, when the output is high, Right there, that's how the current flow. It doesn't make a direct connection like that. It goes through a couple of transistors and you lose a bit of voltage. And uh, so there's gonna be less current and also the, uh, or less voltage I mean, and also the uh, red LED j just doesn't get as bright. And so a lower value resistor will get more current flowing through it and it will get brighter. It'll get closer to the level of light the blue LED gets. Now for the part of the circuit where we get the reaction that we want out of the circuit. So we got pin 6 and pin 2. They're looking for two separate voltages. And we're going to separate them with a resistor right there. We don't want a high value resistor. I uh, used some higher value resistors. This did not work at all. So a bit lower. I used 220 for a minimum amount of resistance if we have bright light falling on there and because uh, current will flow through the light dependent resistors uh, pretty freely if the light is too low. So now I'm going to uh, back up and uh, so we can see the LEDs. I'm gonna turn the power on and you can see that uh, both the blue and the red LED are lighting up right now. They're alternating back and forth really quickly. We're gonna take a light dependent resistor there and go to the positive supply for pin six. And so we have a easy, uh, current path to go through there so voltage can pass through and get to pin 6 when pin 6 is two-thirds So it's five volts right now. It sets the output low there You can see the blue LED is lit up now. I'm going to yank it out. There's a false signal there We're going to the negative supply there and then we're going to uh, pin 2 and there you can see that the red LED is lit up because we have an easy path there uh, zero volts there is less than one-third of the supply voltage giving us a high output right there as you can see So we're going to uh, give it uh, two possibilities now And uh, so what's going on here is that if I cover the uh, Ground one there you can see the output is low, but it already was so we're going to cover the uh, positive supply And so we're making it so this pretty much doesn't exist and uh electrically and uh, so we have a conductive path from low which give us a high output and then if I block the uh, lower one there right there same thing I'm basically making it so it doesn't exist like we showed before I added the two of them 
so we get a pretty uh, good connection to uh, 5 volts above two thirds of the supply voltage because it's a voltage divider that's why it flips back and forth so now when we do have light on both and we get some middle ground voltage it falls between two thirds and one third supply voltage and the 555 timer just ignores the voltage at that point it either has to go above two thirds or below one third otherwise it stays in that middle ground so hopefully that makes sense but in any case hope you found the circuit interesting like a use for this would be if you want something to uh, do something under one condition uh, low until a uh, sensor gets interrupted and then have it do something else until the other sensor gets interrupted or something like that you could have like a train moving back and forth across a path uh, going one way when one before it blocks one sensor and then when it blocks that sensor it goes the other way or something like that or maybe a solar during the day when the light is brighter on one side than the other maybe they shift one direction or the other of course that's complex circuitry this is just the simple uh, sensor part of it but uh, hopefully that uh, gives you an idea how it might be used so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen and uh, check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video